Hi, I'm Dr. George Lockwood, and I'm on the executive board of the International Society of Schema Therapy and a longtime collaborator of Dr. Jeffrey Young, who's the originator of schema therapy. What I'd like to do today is to introduce you to some facets of schema therapy that are unique, that set it apart from most other therapeutic approaches, and at the same time, I see is lying behind it being exceptionally effective in the treatment of long-standing emotional difficulties that have their origin in childhood and adolescence. Now, there are currently three formats for schema therapy, an individual, couple, and group format, and common to all three is a view of the origin of these emotional difficulties as being in unmet core emotional needs. So core emotional needs forms the centerpiece of the theory of schema therapy. And these would be needs like for safety, predictability, needs for warmth and affection, playfulness and spontaneity, uh, needs for understanding and protection and guidance, needs for acceptance and praise, and needs for a sense of belonging to a group or community, needs for autonomy, or needs for healthy limits, or reasonable expectations. So there's a broad range of kinds of needs that are addressed. And flowing from that is uh, that the goal of schema therapy is not to help a patient change their cognitions or beliefs. And it's not to help them learn how to manage their affect better or to develop insight into the, the nature of their difficulties. The goal in schema therapy is to help a patient get their needs met. And that we find that in the process of doing that, that these uh, other changes, the cognitive changes and the emotional changes and the important insights uh, evolve out of getting one's needs met. Now, an example of that with borderline personality disorder, there, our goal there is not to uh, get a patient to stop making suicide attempts or to stop cutting themselves or to stop feeling suicidal even though all those things are, are very important and we want to have happen, but our goal in the treatment is aimed at helping a patient like this get love into her life. And we find that once we're able to do that and that she can experience a sense of love and can begin to love the people that are important to her, that the suicidality goes away and that she recovers from borderline personality disorder. So a majority of patients recover fully and almost all who remain in the treatment will have changes in all their BPD symptoms uh, at a, a significant level and will be feeling much, much better. One of the, uh, the, the main way that we help a patient get love into her life and to make these kinds of changes is through a process called limited reparenting. And limited reparenting involves, amongst other things, our working to get past the, the barriers or walls that a patient will put up between herself and the vulnerable side of herself, or what we call the vulnerable child mode, and the barriers that she puts up between us and this vulnerable side. And once we reach this side, we want to find out what she needs to feel safe and happy. And then we want to do the things that we can as her therapist to be able to meet these needs so that she can feel better. And that will involve things like comforting, understanding, validation, praise, uh, protecting her against mistreatment and abuse or fighting against uh, mistreatment. Playfulness and bringing joy into to her life, and a range of other things that will be informed by our getting to know this vulnerable part of the patient. Now, our doing those things is something that we see as central and important in terms of the change process and building a strong foundation and a secure base. And at the same time, it's directly opposed by most other approaches to, to these kinds of problems. And for example, with dialectic behavioral therapy or transference-focused psychotherapy, they will view the, um, these as demands made by the patient that are inappropriate, 
and are um, uh, and, and that by giving in to these things that will weaken the patient and interfere with their developing the capacity to, to self-soothe their self validate for example. And what we find in uh, contrast to this is that when we trust these needs and respect them and when we uh, see them as normal and healthy, uh, that the patient over time begins to feel more secure, feels more attached to us and feels better about themselves and begins to carry these new kinds of experiences with her out into her life. And out of that grows a capacity to self-soothe, not being trained as it would be with these other approaches, but more growing out of this connection and this process of, of needs being met. And we find that this kind of self-soothing or self-validation is something that comes from the core of who she is rather than something that is at a more surface level or is an outer uh, shell of the capacity to self-soothe. And that the, the kind of change then is, is something that is more lasting and, and more, more pervasive. If limited reparenting also involves setting limits. So we are not actual parents so that we, we have the limits that are a part of being a psychotherapist and also our own personal limits and that we uh, it's important that we not get burned out and to, or become resentful in the process of the treatment. So those, those are uh, limitations that come into it but within those parameters there's a lot that we can do to respond to core emotional needs. The, this is quite different from what most psychotherapists would be trained to do and for that reason when we're working with therapists to train them how to do schema therapy there's a, a lot of um, re-education that needs to take place in these basic sorts of levels and uh, this involves uh, amongst other things a shift to bring much more uh, work from the heart and from the gut level alongside work from from an intellectual side of the, the therapist. The, the evidence for this being a, an effective way to help a patient, a more effective way, comes from a number of different sources. And one of them is a series of outcome studies. And the first outcome study that was done involved a direct comparison between schema therapy and transference-focused psychotherapy in the treatment of borderline personality disorder. And what we found is that schema therapy was twice as effective as transference-focused psychotherapy. And the therapists who did the schema therapy and the patients who received the schema therapy attribute a large part of the effectiveness of schema therapy to this process of limited reparenting. And the subsequent studies, two major studies done since the first one that was published in 2006 have provided strong support for schema for limited reparenting as being uh, central to change and that schema therapy is, is very effective in, in treating these kinds of difficulties. But because it's something which is not typically done, which, which is opposed by most of the major psychotherapeutic approaches to these kinds of problems, and because many therapists, particularly in the United States, are unaware of it, we're eager to reach out to our colleagues to help them learn more about schema therapy and to learn more about the process of limited reparenting. And this is a major reason that we're having the Fifth World Congress in Schema Therapy this year in New York City in May 17th, 18th, and 19th. And we would uh, really like um, any colleagues who have an interest in schema therapy to join us there and to learn more about it and to uh, learn more about the recent developments in the theory and technique. And if you would like to uh, do that, you can go to the ISST website at isst-online.com and there's an area where you can register for the conference and you can get lots more information about it. If you're not able to join us you can sign up for an email newsletter 
and there's an area where you can put in your name and email address and we'll be happy to give you updates on, on recent developments in schema therapy. And um, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen and I hope to see you in New York City.